Thank you, everybody. My name is uh, Yusuf Tayyip Khan, and I'm a poet and a writer. And uh, I have been writing poetry since 1969 and nonfiction for the last three or four years. And uh, I'm here today. First, I'm so happy to see all you beautiful people here. It's really nice to have people come and join me. And uh, I'm going to read poems from my two poetry books and then some non-fiction prose. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Non-fiction prose from one of my non-fiction books. From this you'll get an idea what my poetry is about, what my non-fiction is about. Okay, so I was born in India in 1947 and moved to Hong Kong in 1949. My father moved us all and I lived in Hong Kong till 1993. In the interim, I did come to the United States. When I came to the United States to study at Yukon, at first I did engineering, but afterwards switched to children's literature and anthropology and business. So in 1993, I moved to Egypt, where I'm living now for the last 32 years. I live in Cairo. My wife and I, Jamila, have five children and 10 grandchildren. Okay, and I'm at present, uh, thank you. I'm at present 77 years old. Sorry, I'm at present 77 years young and getting younger every year. Okay, so now with your kind permission, I would like to, it's my pleasure to read to all of you today and I hope you will enjoy it. The first poem I have is the end of a poem which I call Testament. <clears throat> Indeed, through my experiences, as through the distilled experiences of others, shall I find unadulterated truth, and beyond that, the sublime sweet love, which I can never gaze upon directly, but will like a child innocent and unquestioning, do so through the eyes of my lovers. I hold the universe in the palm of my hand, and I shall then whisper to all that pass that single, solitary, soft word, please, please, please. And this is the end of my first poem called Testament. Following that, I wrote a poem called Testament Two, and I'm going to read from part of it, okay? Testament two. From my balcony, I look out yet again, beyond sea and mountain, beyond the imperfect horizon, from a time into a time without focus, a place without form, panic-ridden horses galloping the wilderness plain, thundering images of nebulous memories of a life gone by a hope lost in the future, scattered on the field of conflict, decimated by the onslaught of unrelenting time. Hopelessly scarred, there is no respite, no amnesty. I attempt to rebuild, to reclaim, desires from the heart, aspirations beyond the soul, obliterated beneath the turmoil of an uncertain existence. A solitary explorer with no map, I look for solutions that need no rationalization, answers that need no explanation. I strive to recover, re recapture that essence of just being. Now I'll go to the end of this point. From my balcony, I watch, I wait. Soon, clouds appear on the horizon advancing, gathering, threatening. In the distance, like a stampede, thunder startles the heavens, and soon the raindrops begin to fall. Having accomplished their purpose, the waters run down to the sea and into oblivion. The message is clear. The third poem is called Dedication. Thank you. 
for those moments of sparkle and splendor, those moments of shimmer and reflection, for that cool wind soft in the facets of my mind, that particular warmth, gentle, on my heart. Let the enchantment of your being touch the aloneness of mine, without apology or pretense, but with humility, sincerity, and in confidence, I place your hand on mine, my lips on yours, fused in a moment of passion, an eternity of love. I have only myself to offer. Please don't turn away. At any time you can stop me, okay, if you feel the necessi necessity. The next poem does not have any titles. Some of my poems don't have titles. But so far, all my poems are rhyming. Okay? Galactic storms and black holes I navigate. A speck in the cosmos, unafraid. The passing of time and blizzards of change tell me nothing will ever be the same. I wait. I listen. I shudder. I shiver. In devastating despair, I have come here. So much for this, the end is nigh, and the dikes shall break, and all men sigh, and tremble and quake, while their tremulous lips in the darkness deep whisper words that, like wisps of air, are carried above the worlds of Aspen into the chaos where nothing can happen, beyond the dreamlike sense of effervescence laced with an etern essential floating essence, where the gods seize upon the tenderness and comprehending the sorrow and aloneness within their pity, albeit their nobility, let their gentle, in their gentle stoic humility, light in that void above a fire so bright that the day will dawn those that do right. The void shall be no more, the pleadings will be heard, and in the silence of peace I will know the curse. The next poem also is without uh, any title. And actually it's uh, the, the lines the words the, the lines don't rhyme. I pass this way, a stranger in blue, a wanderer in the mist recalling long dormant dreams of another memory, distant rumblings on a windswept landscape, crimson eruptions on an alien planet. I am a warrior, waiting, wishing, wanting. Upon your innocence, let me place a brilliant shield. Upon your beauty, let me paint myriad rainbow colors. Upon your sexuality, let me ride high. Unbelieving, unknowing, unreasoning, I reach out and I am touched. Let it not be said that we never loved or that we loved too late. Let it not be said that our eyes never met in a moment of clear perception. Let it not be said that our bodies never fused in an instant of imploding joyful climax. Rather, Knowing, believing, but still unreasoning, the essence of your being mingles with mine so that I do not fear the serpent in its labyrinth or Hecate in her netherworld or goblins in their dark dens. But with explosive force, I rise up and dare to say, I will pass this way again. Next poem is called Lovers. Lovers, let me tell you the plight of two lovers forlorn, tossed round and drowned in the waves of the storm. Shooting stars of bright flashes at dawn, coming together as one in the cool of the morn. Resonating undulations of the most intimate kind, two bodies in harmony, a sensual sexual flight. Born on by clouds, 
so so fleecy white who dares to say we have not done right Con at going to the end I think oh there's two more we see stars and galaxies in total disarray and see mountain ridges all fully displaced and plains and parched sands so hot I cannot say at the end of all time will you go away thundering violent eruptions exploding and love was no more and left us standing betrayed we are no hosts and sustaining invades our bodies and all of our being ripples the poem next poem is ripples ripples and it does not rhyme okay ripples i saw that the ripples in the stream were like the diamonds of the night sky, like an unending murmur, an ebbing tide, waves rolling over in the sand, like thunderous rumblings in the distance that end with a deep sigh. Now I could see them, now I could not, but always they would be there, for man and such will pass away, but the ripples endure ever as if their maker had given them the fountain of youth, so that they did not know of age, of comings and goings, past and future, and neither did they know of war and peace, for there was no war. And there was only them, and in the verdant meadows, under the midsummer sun, the leaves of grass. And such things will not pass on. Now we're going to a more light-hearted poem called Economide. And this was written just in short history. I, wa I was in an economics class in the Uni University of Connecticut. And uh, one day we were talking about inflation, etc., etc. And I was so bored that I wrote this poem. <laughs> Economide. Creeping wearily through the clean air comes income investment and employment fanfare. Why must we, on this morning so fair, sit in a classroom and this agony bear? Inflationary gap, oh what a bore! Why is there this drudgery and chore? What other agony is there for us in store? And must we be exposed to more and more? Heaven forbid that that should be, when there is outside so much beauty to see, out in the fields and down to the sea, where you would find only nature and me. Come all you muses, blow me away, let, only, let not any barrier hold me sway, teach me your music, oh what a serenade, and show me sweet nature and teach me to pray. That this book is called Tefaloni Undulations. Okay? And this second poetry book is called Erupting Undulations. And all my books that I've written end with the word undulation. This is an undulating series. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go to the second book. And uh, the first poem is called City. Crooked roads that lead to nowhere, a two-way street that is a dead end, edifices on either side towering above me, a pathway, a byway, devoid of even a tree. In such a strange place, I find myself trapped. Where can I go? I do not have a map. A street map is exactly what I desire. Escape from this prison, from this pain and fire. In this loneliness, there is only icy cold, a place for only the most brave and the most bold. Do you have courage, or are you foolhardy, as you search for some sign of friends and family? Do you have the courage to wander out alone, the fear and terror will chill you to the bone. Pathways 
with no end goals leading nowhere. In the bleak, gloomy night, no one to care. Such stark contrast between the night and day, eerie silence and life, furtively, furtively slip, slipping away. In the night of my terror, I find myself all alone. In the day of my ecstasy, much, much more alone. And now I wrote a poem called Dedication in the first book, and this is called Dedication 2, which I've written here. Dedication 2. Meandering along in lovely dreams, I realize I am not alone, but bright images, mirages, visions, burst out powerfully and engulf me. I think of all those who affected my life, and happenings that have led me here. And so it's time to celebrate. All who have today made me what I am. All those men of art and women of song, all women I have loved that have come and gone. Those that loved me and gave me warmth. Such passion there is, such intensity without compare. Now do I see dark clouds above or sky so deep, deep blue. A prairie of gentle ponies slow, sla slowly, lazily trotting by. A field of undulating poems waving as they pass by. No way to actualize, put into words, as feelings of ecstasy overcome me. And as I look upon your presence in me, and I feel you deeply in me, as I am deeply embedded Within you, I can only say earnestly, again and again, I have only myself to offer. Please don't turn away. Okay, this is a written at a time of the pandemic. Okay? And uh, I will not read all of it. I, it's a long poem. I'll, I'll just see what to read, okay? I still recall, with, this is the second paragraph, second verse rather. The first was deals with death, so I will not uh, read that about the pandemic itself. But I still recall with such vivid clarity a rustling of the leaves and flowing of the rivers, majestic tall peaks and colorful flowering fields, the deer and the fox rambling freely in the forest and the horses and the cows grazing in green pastures. Can you, that, can you not remember that most intense of passions, how we undulated and undulated in rhythm together, swaying in perfect unity to the left and the right, such heart and deep and frenzied penetrations as you gasped and groaned and moaned breathlessly, screaming loudly in excruciating, excruciating pain, and you steeply and slowly arched your small back, such wanton, unbridled, untamed ferocity, such sweetly violent and delicious vicious thrust. Together we reach the ultimate heights of ecstasy. Days and days and moments of touching holding, fondling and joyfully caressing, caressing ever so lightly, clinging so tightly with no air space between whatever, a very loving and deeply caring time and age. Where is that proud, arrogant human spirit now? There's another uh, last one in this book of poems. It's uh, also lighthearted and it's called Oh My Oh My Gosh. Oh My Gosh. Oh My Gosh, by golly gosh, my mind is full of fire. Oh My Gosh, by golly gosh, the flames go ever higher. Oh My Gosh, by golly gosh, Wanton and sexy kissing. Oh me gosh, by golly gosh, holding close and fondling. Oh me gosh, by golly gosh, undulations keep waving. Oh me gosh, by golly gosh, I will never ever be leaving. Oh me gosh, by golly gosh, intense desire as we marvel. Oh me gosh, by golly gosh, such passion we will unravel. Oh my gosh, by golly gosh, so much clinging will be felt. 
Oh my gosh, by golly gosh, into each other we melt. Oh my gosh, by golly gosh, are you really meant for me? Oh my gosh, by golly gosh, I am not able to see. Oh my gosh, by golly gosh, come near and sing to me. Oh my gosh, by golly gosh, flowing lyr lyrically it will be. Oh my gosh, by golly gosh, my music, my muse of music poetry. Oh my gosh, by golly gosh, it is also very pretty. Oh my gosh, by golly gosh, I see there an entity pure. Oh my gosh, by golly gosh, of our love, I am very sure. So these are these are two poetry books I've written and published so far. Okay, now I'm going to read from my non-fiction book, and it's of an undulation, universes in undulation. Okay, and. Uh, While the planet, chapter one. While the planets and stars and galaxies are made up of the matter in the universes, it is this presence, this aura and mist, that is the heart and soul of the cosmos, guiding it and moving it with change and momentum, an ever evolving process. Let us call it loving grace, a benevolent, gentle, caring, compassionate entity that guides us and directs us to that final destination. And how did I this come upon this loving grace? It was almost by accident. You see, I have this Pandora box and open. One day I thought I would open it and look inside and I was blown away. I released loving grace. At that moment, I could see that I held all these universes in the palms of my hands. And I said to all that passed me, please stop, 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 stop this insane hatred, these wars, this destruction, and let us begin healing and loving and living and caring. From chapter two, All universal space is one of silence, a deep, never-ending silence, except for the musical sounds and exploding noises and vivid images of celestial events, such as the collision of galaxies and the explosions of stars. It is almost very still, so imperceptible, so still that it interprets traveler and explorer going from one universe to another might easily miss it, and my, our universe might call to him in silence, but he would not hear. Within the vast expanse of this sea of silence, you would find it is not empty, but filled with a beautiful aura and mist, a sublime, floating, ethereal entity. And like pure silence, it cannot be seen or heard, only an exquisite presence, peaceful, silent harmony. And it is here you would find loving grace in all its beautiful aura and mist and majesty, envelop, enveloping, caressing all. What is this grace that permeates and mingles with all? Is this our creator, the supreme being that commands all? No, it is not, because our creator is above all, above all that is created. And loving grace is part of his creation. Our creator is in a place that is above everything that is created. What is this place? Is this the place known as heaven? The ultimate abode of the creator of all universes? Addressed by different names, God, Allah, Jehovah, to mention a few. It is heaven in a sense. No, but perhaps not. Heaven is not the abode of the creator who is above all. Creator of all this is outside and above all. This creator has existed forever and he exists in a place called the highest abode and from there mingles and permeates with all that exists in creation. All knowing, merciful, compassionate, loving, benevolent. He is a supreme being that rules and commands all 
and he has made everything, including loving grace, out of nothing. He made both matter, matter and energy in every conceivable form. Now we have come to a question, idea, the, this is one paragraph about forgiveness, okay? In the same way that our Creator forgives us, it is paramount that we forgive all around us, no matter if the transgression is small or great. Not to do so would make us persons of little worth and integrity and feeling. We would always be bitter and angry and blaming all around us. <clears throat> there would be no peace and rest for us. The ultimate act is that we, forget, we forgive ourselves. It is forgiveness that permeates and mingles with all the mist aura of loving grace, undulating through the universe, nudging and pushing all towards the ethereal realm of the ultimate loving grace. It is divine knowledge that our Creator has bequeathed to us, that knowledge that is so brilliant and sparkling and glittering that we cannot gaze upon it directly. It has to be filtered before we can know it, understand it, and absorb it. That filter is water. Water makes divine knowledge soft and palatable for us. So we have divine knowledge in the highest abode, cascading over us and filling us and inspiring us. Divine knowledge above and water below, and all entities in between. Such is the beauty our Creator brought into being. And now chapter 5. So, now my fellow fairer and kindred spirit, we have come to the end of this part of our long journey together that began in a dark black vacuum of empty space through various dimensions and alternate universes, through knowledge and water, through concepts of matter and energy, through waves and undulations, through loving grace to this point here. It has been a transpor transformative experience, life clinging. Do you feel transformed? And I will tell you with my eyes and I'm a part of your loving grace, just as you're a part of my loving grace. And you will whisper to me with your eyes across the vast expanse of time and space that single sweet word I have longed and yearned to hear for all eternity, yes. At that point, you will see and know that we hold all the universes in the palms of our hands. And we will say to all that pass, that one single solitary word, please. Um, at this point, I would like to just stop for a minute and see if any of you have any questions about what I read or any comments to make because uh, you will not remember everything I read. So just uh, take a short break. Is there anybody who has anything to say? In the analogy of the, the thunderstorm and, and to, out to the sea, to oblivion, would that mean the cathartic nature of removing pain by feeling the, the full brunt of what it is you were worried about? Well, I was living in Hong Kong at that time, okay, when I wrote this poem, when I wrote this poem, and actually I did stand on my balcony when it was raining, and I did see the rain fall, the thunder come, and the light, lightning and everything, and uh, I felt that, what are we? All this rain is falling and just gets scattered into the oblivion, and that is what, I'm, that is what this poem is about. Have I answered your question? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Can you tell me when the word undulate entered your consciousness? Undulating? Yes. Where the word comes from? Well, you can say where it's from, but where did it intersect with your life for the first time? Well, my life actually is uh, one of undulations, okay? I mean, I, there have been ups and downs in my life, 
and for the most part I'm going like this floating gliding soaring flying you know, ecstatic and my life has been beautiful in that sense in that uh, by undulations and ups and downs I have become a much much better person excuse me and uh, I live life today in undulating peace and calm I don't have any kind of worries or anything I'm just very peaceful and calm and that is I think uh, the best explanation of what, what, how undulating came into my life. Have I answered your question? I have a follow-up uh, question on that. I got the idea of undulation and um, I combined it with the, the idea presented about ecstatic union throughout um, <clears throat> and to the celestial extent as well, undulation uh, in, even down to the salamanders we view um, the universe is wiggling or wriggling. Yes. And um, it's that movement, um, and it seems ecstatic uh, when we're in the flow with it, I guess. Or so there, I saw there was a, a yes. s um, romantic, sexual, right. wiggly, yes, it's all that. wiggly quality to the universe that you Well, you know, if you, have, if you have a graph, you have an axis, vertical and horizontal. Now, the undulation travels along here. But at times, as you said, things get very frenzied. So the, the, instead of going like this, it goes down. And at times you feel very high or ecstatic, it goes up. So it's not an even straight line. Okay? Um, in that sense, as you said, it's a wriggly, wriggly, wriggly thing. And, uh, but the main thing about undulations is that it's very, very, it gives you a very feeling of soothing calm, of peace, inner peace. It has given me that, and I hope that it will give all of you the same thing also. Have I answered your question? Your May your ups and downs be smooth uh, Yeah. Smooth You've got to have still. downs, otherwise you can't come up. <laughs> <Same goes. laughs> okay, now we are coming to uh, your, your friend and mine, Donald Trump. Uh, at the time when Donald, uh, I, I wrote, in, in about, because Donald Trump, as we all know, maybe I'll just go, the name of the poem is Drain O'Donnell. It's about time we put Trump in his place. For a long time, he tweeted insulting and degrading nicknames about his opponents. It is only fair he should have a nickname of his very own, one he can treasure and be proud of. So all together now, very loudly and forcefully, Drain O'Donnell, Drain O'Donnell, Drain O'Donnell. Drain O'Donnell, Drain O'Donnell, Drain O'Donnell. And I wrote a short poem after that called An Odious to Donald Trump. And it says like a song. Drain O'Donnell, Drain O'Donnell, where are you? Here I am, here I am, how do you do? Drain O'Donnell, Drain O'Donnell, what do you like? I like to tweet, I like to tweet, that is what I like. Drain O'Donnell, Drain O'Donnell, what do you do? I drink cleaners, disinfectants, that is what I do. Drain O'Donnell, Drain O'Donnell, what should we do? Dump the from, dump Trump, that is what you should do. Now going a bit, getting a bit scientific here. Evidence suggests that there is a substance called dark matter which accounts for most of the mass in the universes and causes rotation at such high speeds in the outer regions of galaxies. It is real and weird. It cannot be seen, but its influence can be seen in the space and light around it. Dark matter is said to interact with light and visible matter only through gravity. The most important indirect evidence is that dark matter, like all matter, accumulates in large quantities to warp the very fabric of space. That is why you have curved time and curved dimensions and curved space, all curving back upon themselves, all continuous. There is no such thing as a straight line going on forever. Dark matter has no color. It never reflects and emits light of any kind or any kind of radiation. It cannot be seen directly. You cannot touch it. 
If a piece of it was thrown at you, it would pass right through you. If it were going fast enough, it would pass right through the entire earth like a ghost, like a ghost. So in a head-on collision, normal matter would come to a full stop and crumble altogether. I'm going to chapter 4 starting. Here, we will talk more about our Creator. He is the supreme Creator and Lord of all the universes. Everything flows from Him and to His messengers and prophets and transmitted to us, filtered down, much, much less from where it began. And He sends His messengers and prophets to all the corners of the universe, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, and loving grace. Yes, loving grace is also a messenger sent by our Creator. Except for loving grace, they all spread their messages to specific people at a specific, as a, at a specific time in specific places. Such teachings formalized and written down in a set of laws and practices. Only loving grace has the distinction of being universal and timeless. Nothing written down and formalized. Just a few more. Just two more pages. Now talking about, a bit about color. Can you imagine knowledge without color? Universes without color. All so cold and drab. Everything would be grayish. Nothing would be clear but a murky, wet mist. Bitter tasting, acrid smelling. Very little would be visible. And we would all be groping. Such impurity in our universes filled with graces, with grayness. No colors, no shades, no silhouettes, no hues, no nuances. Dead, lifeless universes, colorless. So finally in this book, we are coming to the very end. Now we must part. We sit together on the shore of the silent sea holding hands and clinging tightly to each other. On the shore of the Sea of Serenity, a place of peace and order and harmony and calm and solace. And we gaze at the vast sea and look deeply into each other's eyes, each other's eyes, and communicate <coughs> without speaking in absolute silence. <coughs> this silence as a reflection of the peace and harmony and order and solace and calm between us. We know that we part because it is the way we will meet again in ecstasy and in the blessed state of love for each other in the future. And we know that we hold all the multicolored universes in the multicolored palms of our hands. And we say with our eyes to all that pass the soft single solitary word please 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 thank you very much and uh, i'm so happy again that you all came today and also my books are there in the next room so if you would like to look at them and uh, and also i have brought my own uh, diary and i would be very grateful if all of you would uh, um, write your name ad address and uh, your email and phone number so i can keep in touch with you